The CIS and Republic fought bitterly like cat and dog throughout the Clone Wars, but what would happen if the warring factions managed to establish a peace treaty? How many lives on both sides have to end before we see the futility? Surely there's room in the galaxy for Confederate and Republic planets to coexist. I move that we immediately open peace negotiations with Chancellor Palpatine on Coruscant. The Corporate Alliance will never allow this to happen. So, this scenario may seem very unlikely. After all, the whole point of the Clone Wars was to empower Palpatine. But for this scenario, I want to go with the idea that during the war, Palpatine is discovered to have orchestrated the entire thing. Now, he's not able to execute Order 66 and is arrested or killed. Basically, he's out the picture. Naturally, there'd be a huge outcry. We'd assume that upon learning the whole truth, the Separatists would quickly see that Dooku would be removed from power as well. Now, with both factions no longer been led by the Sith, the Republic will likely go back to its normal routine, electing a new Chancellor, likely a moderate who would push to end the conflict. As well as this, the Separatists would have to elect a new Chairman, which would likely be one of the big tycoons who funded the war for Dooku. However, I also believe that most candidates for this would also want peace with the Republic, simply because war's expensive and the rich tycoons don't want to keep paying for it, and all the other Separatist systems just won't be able to afford it themselves. So, it's likely a peace agreement would be reached, but that doesn't mean anyone's going to be making friends anytime soon. You see, this massive abuse of power that Palpatine got away with proves the Separatists right, sort of. They wanted to leave the Republic because of corruption, amongst other things, and there's going to be a considerable amount of Republic systems who now will struggle to trust their political system. For this reason, relations between the two sides are still going to be pretty frosty. Not to mention, the systems that were involved by the war were ripped apart, lands destroyed, and who's going to have to pay for the reparations for these damages would definitely cause tension between the two factions. Not only physical damage, but what about social damage? Friends and family fighting each other. These wounds will take a long time to heal, and if systems choose to stay with the Republic or go with the Separatists, is going to be a very hot button issue, so there's going to be a lot of stuff to be worked out. Essentially, there's going to be a lot of problems. You see, the Separatists get what they want, more or less, independence, but it's only somewhat independence. The galaxy is effectively going to be split in two, the CIS and the Republic, but both sides are going to have to rely on each other. The CIS will largely consist of the poorer Outer Rim worlds, as well as the major companies such as the Techno Union and Trade Federation. However, in order to really be profitable in the Outer Rim, the companies are going to have to trade with the core Republic worlds. Meanwhile, the Republic worlds, mainly consisting of those in the inner core, will need the big financial tycoons and companies in order to maintain a strong economy and good trade, or they'll all just have to do business in the Separatist controlled lands, because that's that's where the taxes are going to be the lowest and that's where the companies will want to be. Essentially, you're going to look at there's going to be a lot of competition for these companies between the Republic and the CIS. Now, at least they won't be fighting, but it's very likely tensions would be very high and the possibility of a cold war and an arms race ascending is very likely, meaning the militaries would just get larger and larger and more expensive without being used. As well as this, it's likely that all the worlds and systems that were being contested by the end of the war would likely have smaller internal conflicts in their own civil wars, with the Separatist and Republic loyalists fighting to align themselves with their desired faction. So, the CIS and Republic would would be fighting proxy wars long after the Clone Wars had ended. Now, a Cold War can only end in limited amounts of ways. Either the two sides work out their differences and choose that peace is more prosperous for everyone, one side crumbles and is taken over by the other, or inevitably, and probably most likely, the Cold War becomes hot, the Clone Wars would be reignited. Only this time, due to the arms race, it would be far more devastating to both sides, resulting in mass mutual destruction for both factions. But what do you think? Could these two radically different ideals coexist together in peace or not? Please put your opinions and scenarios below as I found this a really interesting talking point and subject to explore. Thanks for watching, please like and sub for more content and I'll see you next time.